AM Events Glasgow Limited is a family-run business that specialises in the creation, planning and management of events, whether that be weddings, charity and corporate events, right through to the celebration and party events. We pride ourselves in customer satisfaction and have our clients at the centre of all that we do. Our best boat services allow us to bring your dreams to reality. We offer our services from the smallest of detail to taking on the full event, releasing the worry from our clients and strive on exceeding expectations. Our showroom is open daily. Please pop in to discuss how we can help. Make sure you click the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click the notifications button to be notified for when my next podcast goes live. You can also follow me on my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest is. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Thank you. And we're on. And today's guest, we've got mm -hmm. Corinne Mitchell. How are we, Corinne? I'm okay, thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, because okay. I know you've not done many interviews in the past. Um, no. <laughs> you've been kind of <laughs> under the bus a few times. Yes, I try and avoid media. Yeah, so Corinne is the mother of Luke Mitchell, who was convicted of murder 16 years ago. Uh, Luke Mitchell has been fighting for a retrial the last 16 years and protested his innocence. So you're here today to kind of shed light on it from your side of the story. Yeah. Um, so we'll go right back to the start, Corinne. Mm -hmm. Like, how was Luke's upbringing? Good. I mean, we were a good family. Um, I was divorced, but Luke was 11 when I got divorced. But totally normal, happy childhood, family holidays. Lovely wee boy, loved animals. Never been in trouble. None of my boys have been in trouble. I've been really lucky that way. But his father and I were married for 20 years and we just grew apart and we thought we'd better split it up, which we did. Which worked out really well for the boys, actually, because they had two homes instead of one. Because Luke used to go and stay with his father every weekend. And he had a very happy life. He had a pony, he had a motorbike, everything. So. I, I had a horse and mm -hmm. we used to ride together. Um, great. So obviously when Luke turned 14, mm -hmm. that's when the nightmare began for you, basically. Yes. The night leading up to Jodie's murder, how was things with Luke and his mindset and everything prior to that? Totally. It was just a normal, normal Monday. I mean, as I say, I was divorced by then and I was working full time at the business. So obviously the boys had their chores to do and... Luke used to cut the grass at work because it meant a tractor. <laughs> so he didn't cut the grass at home, but cut the grass at work. In fact, Jodie used, used to sit in the back of the tractor while he was cutting the grass. And at home, he discovered he loved cooking. So he used to cook. Um, he had the dinner ready for me coming in from work. And I, he used to phone me when he got in from school. And he'd say, right, what's for dinner? I would tell him what's for dinner. And he would cook. How long... Was Luke and Jodie seeing each other for? I think it was about five months. Five months? About five months. Yep. So, leading up to that, obviously when Jodie got found murdered, what was the, the events, the lead up to the events actually, when, when Jodie went missing? Right, well, Luke left the house about 20 to 6 to sit at the end of our street and to wait for her coming. Um, they weren't. They didn't have mm, exact arrangements, but he took it. He she was coming down to our place, and at that time, a whole lot of them were meeting over in the abbey, which was across from from our house, and they'd obviously go for a, a wee smoke and whatnot that Mum didn't know about, but did. Hash. <laughs> yes, yes. Though. The judge and the prosecution b blamed Luke for Jodie being on it. Jodie was on hash long before she met Luke. Long before. And so he went, he sat on the wall at the end of our street, 
nothing happened. He walked up a few yards to what's called Barrendale Cottages, so he could like, see around a corner, because that road's quite bendy. So he walked up a few yards so he could see around the corner to see if she was coming. Couldn't see anything. Waited and waited, then phoned me and said, has Jodie been to the house? I was like, no. He said, well, how do you know you're out in the back garden? Because our house, if you came to the front door and you're out in the back garden or conservatory, you wouldn't have a clue. I mean, I could have been burgled and I wouldn't have a clue. And I said, don't be daft. Mia would alert me if somebody was at the door. That's a dog. Yeah. So he said, well, you sure? I said, of course I'm sure. Mia would go. Every time the door went, she went absolutely berserk. So he said, well, if she comes or if she phones, tell her we're in the Abbey. She'll know where. Right, okie dokie. And that was it. That was it. So it must have been, his curfew is 10, same as hers. And it must have been around about nine-ish or something like that. And he arrived home. And I went, guys, you're early. And he went, has Jodie not been? I went, no. He said, has she phoned? I went, no. I wonder where the hell she is. I went, look, she's a young girl. She'll be in somebody's house, yipping. Mm-hmm. And completely forgot. I said, boyfriends come way down the line when it comes to wee girls talking. Mm-hmm. So then he got a phone call from Jodie's mother. And no, he got a text. Right, Toad, get up the road. You're grounded. Because by this time it was past her curfew. So he phoned her and he said... She's not here. I said, what do you mean she's not here? No, oh, she never came down. I've been with my friends and she's never come down. My mum says she's not been out the door. So she went, oh, well, I'm going to phone around all her friends and all the rest of it. So left at that. And then there was another phone call. And then Luke came to me and went, mum, um, Judy's organising a search party. We're going out looking for her. I went, not at this time of night, you're not, young man. And he went, I'm going out looking for her. End of. No argument. I said, well, you're taking the dog. So, because this time it was late. Mm -hmm. So, off he went. And he'd taken Mia out. Because I said, I'm going to save your mum's old legs and take Madam out for her last pee for the evening. And he was away two seconds. Of course, by that time he'd got the phone call from Judy. So, he left. And that's Jodie's mum? Yeah. They're all J's. Please have it with your teeth. So, the Luke got a torch from his brother, and off he went with torch and dog. Now, see, when you're behind a German Shepherd, you move fast. I mean, you have no choice. You move fast. Now, Luke, I was a, always a very fast walker, but Luke was a really fast walker. So he was fat. He was young, fit, and behind a German Shepherd, moving very, very fast. Now, from our house to the top of the path, it's a, it's a fair distance, but far less than what the rest of the search party had to cover. They had to come from the top of Mayfield down. Now, you've got a 67-year-old arthritic granny. She's not going to be moving very fast. So how many know? people went out looking for Jodie? There was a Luke, there was a granny, the sister, and the sister's fiancé. And Jodie was supposed to meet Luke that day? Yes. And she never got found and then they went mm. out on the search for her because mm. they said it was Luke who found the body, but it was the dog. It was Mia. Mm-hmm. What happened was, and we still don't know how, but when Luke got to the top of the path, the plan was he'd arranged with Judy that he would meet Judy at their house to go over friends' phone numbers that Judy probably wouldn't have because... You know yourself as a parent, you don't know all your your kids' you friends your and kids you don't have them. their phone numbers. So Luke said he'd go and meet Judy at her house and go over all the friends. But what confuses us is the phone records show that she never phoned any of her friends. She phoned the granny and that was all she phoned. But anywho, that was the plan. But when Luke got to the top of the path, the other three members were already there and we have no idea how they got there. That fast. No idea. So Luke wasn't the first one at the body? He was the first one who saw it, Mm -hmm. but the granny actually cradled her. Now, she could have had DNA transference, 
that she washed all her clothes and her clothes weren't taken. None of the three clothes were taken. Only Luke's clothes were taken that night. Did Luke have an alibi? Yeah, me. Mm-hmm. Did he mm-hmm. use any phones or anything that night? He phoned me. Yeah, what time did they phone you? Oh, flip. I can't remember what time. Did these records and that, did they get used in court? Some of them, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So after it, after everything, after the body was found, when did the police start coming to the door and start, obviously, putting Luke as a suspect? Right away. I mean, we... He... The, he dialed 999 in the first instance. The police finally came. Though, bear in mind, you're only a few yards away from a police station, but they finally came because they couldn't find it. Then... They trampled all over the scene. They moved Jodie's body. They moved all her clothing. They cut down branches and threw them away. Then the only child in the search party, Luke, right? He was the only child. They tried to get him to go back over the wall to show him where the body was. And he was like, no, I'm not going, no, I'm not going over there. They wanted his DNA over the other side of the wall. So when... There was no DNA looks there? None. None at all? None. And did they take all Luke's clothes? All his clothes. They did his fingernails, they took hair samples, saliva, the lot. And nothing? Nothing. And what about, because there was accusations that there was a log burner, but you were burning clothes in the back garden? <laughs> yeah. Tiny little thing. Um, portable barbecue base, basically. And they took the contents of that away. Mm-hmm. Nothing, obviously. Because when Sandra Lean was in the criminologist who worked on the case with you, um, a lot of people were asking questions why Luke didn't take the stand if he was innocent. His, his QC was Donald Finlay. Mm-hmm. So why didn't he take the stand then? Finlay wouldn't allow him. Why was that? No idea. He just wouldn't allow him. Luke wanted to take the stand and we wanted him to take the stand. You don't argue when you're 15. You do not argue with Finlay. Uh-huh. Um, if, Finlay if you say something Finlay didn't like, he slammed his fist down on the desk. It's my way or no way, laddie. Uh-huh. End of. Because the thing, obviously, we've got to take into consideration that if Luke was to get a retrial and Luke did get a not guilty, uh-huh. then there's a murderer on the loose. And you're still but there got, always has been. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's un- you've got to understand that there's still uh, a 14 year old victim that. His family's probably going through torment. But what shed light on it for me is when um, you passed a lie detector, look past a lie detector in mm. prison, um, three questions you got and you'd passed with flying colours and yep. also look. There was, um, Luke was doing the lie detector with his eyes closed. Mm-hmm. Can you explain that a bit? Yes. Because a lot of people are saying he had his eyes closed because he was concentrating. Yeah. If he did it, a liar can pass a lie detector, yeah. stuff like that. Well, bear in mind, yes, you can be trained, but it takes years. Luke had (laughs) weeks. Where he did the the test is it's a row of lawyers' offices. It's where, if you have a lawyer's visit, it's where you go. It's so guards can see what's going on. So you've got, say, five rooms, but each wall between them is glass. So you can see from room one down to room five, because it's glass. And then at the front, there's glass. And of course, the guards were doing faces and carrying on. So the polygraph examiner said to Luke, look, you're going to have to close your eyes and just blot everything out. He said, this isn't the ideal place to be in to do this. He said, but this is where we've been given. This is where we have to do it. You're going to have to close your eyes and just forget that these people are out there. Uh-huh. So that's why he closed his eyes. Who was the man who did the polygraph? Terry Mullins. And who was Terry? He's the big chief oh. of polygraphs. Do you yeah. remember the questions that Luke got asked? Not Luke. No, I uh-huh. kind of blotted Luke's out a bit uh-huh. because when I watched it, it was... To me, it looked like he was on death row about to get zapped in an electric chair. Yeah. So... Gave you the fear. I don't, don't what like What was your it. questions? I have 
a copy of them in, right. in my bag. So we'll put that on the yep. camera, the questions and the answers. Yeah. So how long after the conviction was the, the lie detector for you? Oof. Years. Absolutely years. Were you nervous about taking it? I was, yes, because I take palpitations and there's no rhyme or reason for them. I could be stressed and I take them. I could be totally chilled out and one disappears. And what worried me was I would be asked a vital question. And mm -hmm. <laughs> because the press mm -hmm. were waiting outside as well? No, they were actually... Well, they were waiting outside while I was doing the test, mm -hmm. but when I was getting my results, yeah. they were allowed in. Were present? Yes. So you must have been a lot of fear then because... It was horrible. Yeah, that... It was just yeah, horrible. So you've, you've got the answers that we can put out there to show yes, people. Yes, I have, yes. How's your life been since the conviction of Luke? In a word, crap. Yeah. Um, I was physically attacked. My business was attacked constant times. I had 40 caravans totally destroyed in one night. Um, they've ruined my business. So I'm having to sell up. I've got no business to talk of left. I've no caravans left. It's called Scots Caravans, and there isn't a caravan to be seen except a wrecked one. They were all burnt down? Well, a lot of them were burnt down, but the rest were just wrecked. And when I say wrecked, I mean wrecked. Not a window left. Big poles put through the bodywork. Interiors ripped. Just totally wrecked in one night. What did the police do for that? To try and help you? Or? Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean absolutely nothing um, across from us before they'd built the new flats there was a big white wall and on it was Scots are murderers so we phoned the council to get them to you know take it off and we also phoned the police now a worker at the Shell petrol station next to us she saw who did it and she told the police and the police said, no, we can't do anything. There's no witnesses. She said, but I'm a witness. I'm a witness. No, but because of who it was, they wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. This person's never touched. Because obviously, that's no excuse because you never did anything. You never did anything. But obviously, because of the crime, people are full of hate and rage. Yeah, I got a brick through my rear window when I was driving. That was, that was horrible. Then the police were going to do me for dialing 999 while I was driving. <laughs> yeah. Then he said, oh, did you get out and see who it was? I went, no, because I didn't want another one in the face. Thank you. So how have you dealt with it then, to still be here and keep fighting for your son's innocence and going up and visiting him every week? And you just do you, it. Have you contemplated suicide or anything yourself? Have you tried to quit? No, and... that wouldn't be fair on Luke for a start, and it wouldn't be fair on my other son. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a coward's way out. Yes, you get down, you get... I'm bitter. I mean, somebody once said to me, if you're not careful, if you don't start socialising again soon, girl, you're going to become a bitter old woman. And I laughed and I went, I'm not going to become a bitter old woman. I am a bitter <laughs> old woman. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to say celebrate, but I had my 60th in February. I so I am that. officially an old woman mm -hmm. and I'm bloody bitter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm bitter at, obviously, media, the police... I mean, there's that age-old joke, how do you tell a cop's lying? It's lips are moving. And that is true. That is absolutely true. So what do you think the... Do you think it's been a mistake? Or do you think he's been set up? Or do you think... In life, there's always good and bad people, no matter where it is. And has the cops just actually made a, a real tragic mistake? Or have they tampered it's, the evidence? It's or? hard to think because when you're with them all the time I mean I say they searched our home three times and I've never actually seen such stupidity in all my life and nastiness like they use words like concealed instead of in you know just put down in those trousers were in a hold all they weren't concealed in a hold all they were in and then I was caught on CCTV in a shop Whereas one of Jodie's family members was just seen on CTV. Why was he seen and I was caught? Do you think it was trial by media? Definitely. Do you think from day one that Luke's name's been there and the police were just actually, they believed it was him that had just tried to look for something to actually convict him? They thought it's the boyfriend. 
easy peasy. You know, this is this is going to be a quick, a quick get. How long after Jodie's murder was the conviction? Jodie was June two thousand and three. Um, almost, the trial was two thousand and five, wasn't it? He got arrested in two thousand and four. So it was over a year later. Right. It was. He was arrested in April. 14th, and we all were, Shane, Luke and I, we were all arrested. Um, and this is what we don't understand, is I was arrested and charged with perverting the course of justice. Shane was arrested and charged with the same, and yet our charges were dropped at Luke's trial. Now, obviously, they've convicted him because they've not believed me, because I'm his alibi, so they've not believed me so why was I not tried then? You can't have one and not the other. Were they try to try you to maybe confess to something that you didn't do, or were they try to give you the fright to maybe come clean about something that you maybe hiding? Or I have no idea. How was Luke leading up to the trial when I actually got charged? What did they get charged with? Murder. Yeah, but what evidence did they have on None. him? None. None. There was nothing. And this is another thing, you know, you read in the papers or you see in the news, oh, we couldn't charge this individual because there was no evidence. Charge Luke. I've reported things to the police that has happened in my business. And he went, do you have any witnesses? I went, mm, no, can't charge. Well, you didn't have any witnesses with Luke. He managed to charge him. So the witness statements as well, apparently there's a few witness statements being changed from yes. day one right until the end. To Luke's conviction, how mm -hmm. many statements were changed? The search parties. Were changed? Did they, mm -hmm. Could they not use that in court, the ones, the first statements? Well, I'm hoping so, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. Their words was, they didn't seem to need cooperation, and we did. Now, the sister's alibi was her fiancé and vice versa, and that was accepted, but... My alibi wasn't accepted for Luke. And there was five other pieces of DNA around the body, is that correct? We've got semen, sperm, saliva, blood, hair and fibres. None of it looks. Finlay could have stopped that trial on day one by saying just that. He could have walked in that court and said, Your Honour, members of the jury, we have blood, semen, sperm, saliva, hair and fibre. They are not my clients. I rest my case. What jury could convict on that? And what was this, this story on the Marlon Manson stuff? <laughs> A load of rubbish. He had one ripped up calendar, which was given to him by his father's new wife. And he had one CD bought after the murder because he liked one track on it. I'm sure it was, it was an old record redone because I said he'd killed it. I, I, I can't stand Manson. Um, tainted Love. That's it. You probably won't remember that. Yeah, I remember that, that song. You? Yeah, yeah I actually right. remember that song. So he redid it and he murdered it. <laughs> you know, um, didn't like it at all. But Luke liked it and he got the, bought the CD, but that was after the murder. And as I say, apart from that, he had one ripped up calendar given to him by his dad's new wife. And yet... Jodie's, and that was, a huge thing was made of that. A huge thing was made of the Manson thing. We were like, but he didn't, he wasn't a fan. Her own sister had Marilyn's entire collection. But that was fine, apparently. Again, it's not, it doesn't matter what clothes you wear or what music you listen no, to. It's not it doesn't. enough to convict anybody. There's, so, for the, the wood burner, was it the wood burner? The thing in the garden where they said you were burning clothes. The, my my log burner. Log burner. Uh -huh. And the two. So what was that about the log burner? When he says was it a Parker jacket or was it clothes that looks you were burning? Well, in the, the garden. They said I must have burnt the Parker jacket. Now that was a joke because, as I say, it's a portable barbecue base, which is about no more than twelve inches across. Now the parka in question, it was a genuine arm, German army parka, weighed a bloody ton. How he could walk in it, I have no idea. But that was bought, again, after the murder. Luke was a type of lad who didn't wear jackets. You could buy him any jacket, 
and he would not wear one. He hated jackets. Now, after they'd taken all his clothes, I said, well, we're going to have to go into town and get you clothes. You need clothes. And we're in one of his daft shops in town and he spied this parka. Now, the liaison officer that they, I was appointed to us, that was a joke as well. Um, she was just a nasty, nasty little piece of work. She just lied. Every time she opened her mouth, she lied. She came to the door and said, oh, can I have a word, Corinne? I went, not right now. We're going into town to buy clothes because you lot left them with none. So we're going into town. Excuse me. And I walked past her. So when we we're in the shop, Luke spied the jacket. I went, oh, Mum, look at that jacket. And I went, it's July. What the hell are you looking at a jacket like that for? He went, ah, but I can use it for school, going back in the autumn, and then there's winter coming. And I'm like, you don't wear a jacket. I went, yeah, but I really like that. He went, it's on sale. Of course, the word sale to mother go ping. <laughs> so you're like, oh, okay. So we bought the jacket and obviously other trousers, T-shirts, and what they're allowed to put on T-shirts nowadays was a bit of a shock. Um, <laughs> I spent <clears throat> my entire time in that shop going, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God, are they allowed to do that? Can they do that? So anywho, we got all the stuff. Got back to the house, and lo and behold, there's Michelle, the liaison officer, waiting for us at the house. All smiley, smiley. And she asked what clothing we'd bought, so we showed her, including the parka, and she asked for the receipts, and we gave her them. So they know for a fact that I bought that bloody jacket after the murder. But that's the jacket you've seen with in all the photos? And the papers. That's when he went back to school. That was after the murder. And what was the scenario when he went when Luke went back to school as well? How long was he back for? A couple of days. Um, I had a total fallout. The, the head head teacher was a naive git, and the headmistress was basically you're talking Hitler in a skirt here. <laughs> <laughs> nasty, nasty, nasty piece of work. Um, so they said that. Luke, um, they got us in prior to the school going back in the autumn and said, right, we're, we can't allow Luke back in the school with the rest of the pupils. You're going to have to wait a week or so and then bring him back. I went, what's the purpose of that? He went, well, you know. I went, no, I don't know. Please explain. Well, you know. I went, no, I don't know. I said, you do realise I've just got rid of the press in front of my house. They were virtually camping out in front of my house. They'd bring sandwiches and everything. It was a picnic. I said, I've just got rid of them. I said, by doing this, you'll bring them back. No, I think you'll find they'll forget all about it. <laughs> yeah. So he wasn't allowed back on the same day as everybody else. And then finally, he got to go back. And then within hours, he phoned me and said, Mum, can you come and pick me up, please? I was like, why? What's happened? He went, I'm not allowed break with everybody else. I'm not allowed dinner with everybody else. And I'm not allowed in the same classrooms as everybody else. And I'm like, what? So I went down to school, picked him up. And that's, you know, that's when I met Hitler in the skirt. And he had to get educated at Green Hall, which worked out quite good, actually, because it was a one-to-one -one basis, so... And he ended up getting all his O-levels, which he sat when he was in St Mary's. So, so obviously he'd finished his O-levels still after, before he'd get charged? Before he got charged? Yes. Yeah. So even the day he got convicted, what were you expecting the outcome to be? The verdict? Our biggest worry was not proven. That was our biggest worry. We didn't want a not proven. Guilty never came into the scenario. We thought, there's, there's not a jury in this earth that convict. There's no evidence. There's DNA of others. There's none of Luke's. There's no witnesses. There's nothing. A jury cannot convict. So it was not proven was our worry. And when the jury came back, we were like, two of us looked at each other and went, what? One of the jury members came in with a can of Coke and went to the Joneses family. The thumbs up as if mm -hmm. you've got a guilty. Yeah. Now, the press made a huge thing. He showed no emotion. You're not allowed to. You have strict 
strict instructions from the judge, no emotion will be shown. Now, the defendants told that, and all the witnesses, a clerk of court comes in and says, the judge says, no emotion. We don't care what the verdict is, you show no... So that's what we were told. And yet, the Joneses got to shout at the top of their voices, hang the bastard. Yeah, so when he was going through, when he got the guilty, and obviously no emotion, how, what was his feeling the next day? Did you try and put Shock. him for a retrial straight away? Or? Well, I tried to talk to Finlay, and he went, no, it'll be fine, you know, we'll, we'll go for a, an appeal. And I said, how long that? What will that be? He said, oh, I don't know. I said, this should never have happened. How did this happen? How? I mean, we got to see Luke, well, they were behind glass just afterwards. And just shock. I mean, just utter. It was like somebody had taken a mallet and gone right between his, his eyes. Just shock. And did you ever have an appeal? Yes, we had, I think it was two appeals, I think there was. And both knocked back? They're jokes. Appeals are jokes. It's nothing to do with the case. It's all about, in um, this case in 1906, and in this case in 1904, and in the trial against it. And you're like, why are you talking about these people? This is, you know, this is about Luke Mitchell, not about these people. It's just a joke. And judges will not go against each other. And what do you think the outcome, the whole outcome's been of this? What do you think's happened? for it to get a, a guilty verdict? Well, not only have you got a dead girl, you've got a young man now he is, he's not a boy, he's a young man who's had his life wasted. He's mm. been locked up half his life. He was locked up and taken away at 15. And come July, he'll be 31. And is there any other signs of a retrial? We're hoping so. Because since he's been in, we've had new evidence. Um, we've had a confession. And we've had a positive ID of someone seen behind Jodie, and it's the same person who confessed. And so if you know, the police or the courts can't see that as a witness, then... Has that ever been put forward to the police or no, the courts? no. No, as I say, it's only come to light in the last few years. So there's a confession from somebody who's actually did that? Yes. Scary to think that. Again, I've still got to sit in the fence because I've still got to understand, you've got to understand that there's still a, a girl who's been murdered and I don't know all the facts. I don't know. Um, I've not seen it in black and white. I'm only taking it from your side and um, Sandra's side. But... Again, when it was Joe Steele, who is a very well-respected man, spent 20 years in prison and said that Luke was Mitchell, uh, Luke was innocent because obviously the lie detectors, because when Joe actually mentioned on my podcast that um, Luke was innocent, my old recognition of what that was, I mm -hmm. thought he was guilty myself. I thought he was guilty because, because of what of the, the media put And him. I never heard anything of it and then... That's when I put the, feel, the feelers out to try and get you on the show to tell your story. And because if there is an innocent man, if listen, if he's if he's guilty and I'm here and I'm shedding light on it, it's going to backfire in me. But when people who I know and are well respected believe he's innocent, then there is question marks about it. And yeah. it is scary to think that it happens all the time. I've had TC Campbell and Joe Steele on my show who spent 20 years in prison and were wrongly convicted. So it does happen. It does happen. It does happen, and it's bad enough if you're a grown man and it happens. But when you're a young lad, you, you've you had your entire life taken away from you because you grow up in a prison system. You don't, you're not allowed to mature normally. Like, his friends now, they're either married or in a relationship. Some of them have got children. They drive. They've been to pubs, obviously. Luke's never had any of that. Have All you, things you and I take for granted, he's never had. Have you anybody been supporting you either? Have you lost a lot of family, a lot of friends? I've lost a lot of family through death. Um, I mean, obviously, when my family were all alive, they all supported me, but most of them are dead now. I've only got cousins left. Mm -hmm. um, friends, I have no friends left. 
at all. Um, not because they think Luke's guilty. It's just they don't know what to say. And I'm like, well, you don't have to say anything. Just give me a hug or just talk normal. A lot of people will be scared, though, to say they know you or show emotion because, because he has been convicted. So in other people's eyes, he's guilty. A yeah. lot of people are too scared to touch on it. Other people, it's such a touchy subject. What I discovered quite early on is if I went somewhere, an area where the majority of people read broadsheets, I was fine and I was accepted. And it was, hello, Mrs. Mitchell, how are you? And how's your son? That's just ridiculous that he's in, in prison, just ridiculous. If I went somewhere who the people mainly read tabloids, I was a dead woman walking. You're just not safe at all. And how's your safety now with others? Now, touch wood, um, yeah, I get positive. Though I'm still very wary. If I go into Dalkeith now and if I'm in a shop and someone approaches me, your knee-jerk reaction is to go backwards. Mm. Do you think, are they going to hit me or hug me? You don't know. But in the last few years, it's been it's been fine. It's been absolutely fine. But it's high category in the prison. Yes. So he's high risk, but yes. he's not taking any of his courses for to bring that down to low category. Um, why is that? Because that's you admitting your guilt. But could he not get out if he takes his courses and... Uh, no, that's... Well, he, he, would, he would get... If he took his courses, yes, he would get parole and he would get out. But he's not going. He's never going to admit guilt because he's not guilty. So he's just going to try and keep fighting until yes. he walks out the door innocent. Yes. So how's it? It's such a again. It's such a touchy case. You, you know that yourself. Mm -hmm. But for some family to lose a daughter, and then potentially you've lost a son, and we've well, not lost him, but to be fighting for his freedom must be draining you constantly. It does. I mean, it's the first thing you think of in the morning, and it's the last thing you think at night. And then we've been accused of, you know, when, whenever we do something to try and help look, the papers jump on it and go, oh, they're putting the Joneses through hell. How could they do that? It's disgusting. Have they not gone through enough? Well, my son's innocent. Yes, I'm sorry your daughter is dead. That's awful. It's absolutely awful. And he suffered for that. He suffered tremendous trauma because he couldn't even grieve for her because the press were right there. The police were right there. But he's got to fight for his life as well. And we're not going to just let that happen because we feel sorry for another family. Well, you were told not to go to Jodie's funeral? Yes. How long, when Jodie was found, how long was the funeral after her body was found? This is what was just weird because it was quite soon because they hadn't even made any arrests or anything and then she, but she was allowed to be buried. Yeah, usually to hold the body for, yes. it can be six months up to a year. I don't know if things have changed. Mm -hmm. I think it can maybe six weeks now. I think they have changed that. I'm not sure though. So, obviously the news as well, that you were on Sky News, was it the day of the funeral? Yes. What they was the story totally about that? Stitched was that up. a hatchet job? Yes, totally. And see, we were totally naive in all things press. We'd never dealt with the press. We'd never dealt with anything like that. And all they said was, could they come in and see? Because we heard, held our own wee sort of vigil for her and we lit a candle and whatnot and they asked to come in and see it and then boom, they're like a pack of rabid dogs. It was horrible. I mean, it was really scary. And then a uh, daft psychologist, was it Ian Stevens or something, picked up on the fact that I had my arm around him. I'm a mother. I'm protecting my son. It's the first thing you do. You know, leave him alone. You know, he's my baby. Leave him alone. Because they have says about like weird relationships and Luke sleeping in the same bed. What was that story? Luke well? was on very, very strong medication because obviously he was totally traumatised. By this time, the press were just vile. The police were vile. And in our living room, we had two big couches. I mean, really big couches. So I'm like, right, you sleep on that one, I'll sleep on that one. I didn't want him negotiating stairs under heavy medication because he would have tumbled back down and I wanted to keep an eye on him. So we're both sleeping in the living room. Because the papers would say that you sleep in the same bed and stuff like that. How could they, I don't understand how they could release names before trial, especially a minor as well. 
Other do I, but they did. And they photographed him being taken away handcuffed. And I said to him, you cannot allow the press to photograph him handcuffed. That's illegal. And they don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And, and they did. Then when he was in the car, one of them grabbed him by the hair and went, show them your face, you wee bastard. They grabbed his hair? Yeah. Did they ever get like, beaten up or anything by the police or threatened? Not so much beaten up, but definitely threatened. He needed the toilet during one interview. And the social worker that was in with him got up to go with him. And the cops turned around and went, you sit. And the cops went with him. And they both went up, went behind him and went, confess, you wee bastard. Just fucking confess. We know you did it. Just fucking confess. So we're trying to browbeat them all the time. Did you have a lawyer present? No. Why was that? They wouldn't allow it. So there wouldn't allow a lawyer present for a 14-year-old to... No. Have you ever had no. anybody from the police come forward and say that they've made a mistake or anybody from the courts to say, we think we've made a mistake? Have you ever had anybody... Sandra had a cop come and that's how it... He gave her the the just about the confession because it was him that actually took the confession. And that's never been put forward for. And people mm. watching us might be thinking, nah, it doesn't seem right. But again, Joe Steele, who again was on the show, had they had the confessions of the because they had the guy gave a a statement against them to say that they were in a pub, which they weren't, mm -hmm. and the guy actually confessed that he was told to say that, but they still wouldn't give him a retrial we still wouldn't use that in court so right. it's, it's courts and shit and police it's difficult it's very difficult it's a different world it's just it's, a different world um, again you're going to get good cops you're going to get bad cops it's like anything in life you get good teachers bad teachers You, it's just the way life is but have they made a terrible mistake maybe they've read the papers maybe they're reading out the media that they think it was and it's a small community and they wanted and needed a quick conviction so what easier go after the boyfriend they thought I've got a wee laddie and he was he was a wee smite at 14 he was tiny at 14 you know how easy is this going to be get him to confess no problem but they didn't bank on Luke being Luke what about and what annoyed them was he was more intelligent than they were what about a murder weapon? Ever found? Mm. Nothing? We've Sandra and I have got a theory on that one. The bike that was seen at the V in the wall. There's a V in the wall where the stones have fallen away. And there was two lads on mucking about on a moped. And they, the, the moped was seen at the wall, at the V. And in court, they were asked, well, where were you? Your bike was seen, where were you? And they couldn't and wouldn't answer. And it was left at that. They wouldn't answer where they were at all. Now, where the body was, was on Roan Dyke's path. There's another path adjacent that runs an L to Roan Dyke's called Lady Path. Now, along here is Reed Drive, where one, a cousin or a second cousin don't understand all the second cousin nonsense, but he lives along there and his back garden is adjacent to the path. It backs onto the path. Now, how easy for to go along Roan Dyke's path, along Lady Path, straight into the back of their house. Now, we know there was a there was scrapyard involved somewhere along the line. How easy is it to take a motorbike, a knife, bloody clothes, I'm not swearing, I'm bloody as in blood covered, yeah. chuck them in the back of a van, crush it. So how far was the... Gone forever. How far was the the spot from where Jodie was murdered to your house? Um, I'd say 10, 15 minute walk. So if Luke was to have done that, then he'd have to have walked home and know that there was no... See, when, when you come out the path, you're on to New Battle Road. And then New Battle Abbey Crescent, where we lived, right at the end, there's a bus stop. Now, at that time of night, it was very, very busy. You've got folk coming off buses, coming home from work and all that. 
you've got to cross a busy road and go into a housing scheme that's got over 200 houses. So the time... And he was seen by two boys. So what, the, what, rough, what time did they roughly say Jodie was murdered? It keeps changing. And where was Luke when roughly the time she was murdered? In the house. And he, So when Sandra was on, he said he'd made a phone call to, I don't know if it was your work or your, your other son's work, to say that it was dinner there or he was making he phoned, dinner. He always phoned, when he got in from school, he always phoned me to find out what he had to cook for dinner. And there's phone dinner. records of this? Yes. And was that yes. used in court? The phone records? I can't remember. Or because they did not use, they couldn't use your alibi because you were his mum? Was that yeah. correct? And I wasn't allowed in the trial. I was kept till the very, very last day to give my evidence. I wasn't allowed in. So there was no... So when the boys in the moped as well, there's boys in the moped there mm -hmm. who... Did they see they'd seen Luke? Did they get a description of Luke? No, they they just they were seen by other witnesses um, causing a nuisance on this bike, and they went into basically tool hire, which is a business on that road, and they were causing a disturbance there. And they'd gone in there, and when you read now, one of them they never came forward, and the police were asking for these boys in the moped to come forward. And they never came forward for five days. Oh, such a, oh, they came forward eventually? Eventually. But in those five days, one of them had cut off all his hair. Now, in court, Finlay asked him why he cut off his all his hair. I mean, boys don't do it. Girls do it. I mean, I've been cutting my own hair for years. Um, boys, mm, not so much. But he cut off all his hair. Now, he had nearly a year to think up an excuse Nothing, absolutely nothing. And of course, we're all thinking mm, he did that so he wouldn't look like you know the boy in the bike. Turn that around. He cut off all his hair so he would look like the boy on the bike because he was never on that bike. Witness statements do not describe him until he cuts his hair off. So there was two people... And his statement's all over the bloody place. So why... I don't understand why the, how these, why the QC hasn't used these statements to say, look, they've all changed. They've all changed to say... It's, it's not really concrete, is it, if they've changed so many times? I can't tell you why Finlay did it, but we know why Finlay did it. Yeah? Let's just say upped his bank balance a bit. So who do you think... So who do you think killed Jodie Jones? The person who confessed and the person who was I positively ID'd. And all the statements... So was Luke ever... Uh, was he ever the, a description gave of him at the time on the path? No. No. I've had numerous people come into my work over the years and said, Corinne, you know, so-and-so saw somebody or we know so-and-so. You know, they went to the police. The minute the description didn't fit Luke... So it was Luke that night as well. Did he go out and play with friends? Yes. And did they go to court? Were they witnesses? They weren't in court, no. Could that not have been an alibi potentially yes. as well? Yes. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a puzzle, isn't it? It's, it's, it's just shocking that they can get away with it. I mean, there's a young boy who hasn't done anything and he's had his entire life ruined. Do you think Luke will ever get out? Yeah, I can visualise it in my head. Yes, I can. Um, but it's been so long, 16 years. If Luke gets a retrial for this, this could potentially be one of the biggest miscarriages of justice ever. the UK has ever seen. Mm -hmm. And that's scary for people who have maybe been promoted, for people who's maybe covered up stuff. And I don't, I don't know, I've not got all the answers. I'm saying if I'm just listening to your story, listening to Sandra's story. Mm -hmm. There's always three sides to a story, there's always both sides and then there's the truth. It's for me to give people a platform and let them tell their side of the story without yep. things getting twisted. Because if he is innocent, then fuck me, there's going to be a shitstorm for people Ooh. who are involved. And not only that, there's a murderer, a murderer on the loose. Somebody's killed a 14-year-old girl, innocent yep. girl, and her family will be distraught and live with that for the rest of her life. And they'll probably hate me, I get it, because... I'm giving you the platform to tell your story, but 
your son is potentially innocent. Yep. And it's it's scary to think. But the, the judge misled the jury, and I don't know how the jury fell for it, because the judge told the jury that Luke, when he went over the wall, he turned left because he knew where the body was. He turned left because that's where his dog reacted. He would have been an absolute idiot had he turned right. So the people who Luke was with searching for the body, what was their statements at the start with Luke? At the start, they all agreed with Luke. They all agreed how the dog reacted because he'd let her off. The, they'd gone up the, the path at an, an alarming rate. But then it's, you'll see yourself, it's the kind of path, if there's anything on it, you're going to trip over it, right? Only she was on the, the other side of the wall, which Sandra and I went over, and you can't walk two feet and you're getting your hair caught in branches and all the rest of it. But he'd gone up, and of course the, the other search party members were there. Now, weirdly, and Finlay asked her, and she wouldn't answer, she would not answer, the grandmother insisted they go back down the path that Luke's just come up. Why? He would have tripped over something if anything had been there. But no, why didn't she go along Lady Path? Why didn't she search the cousin's house, which she had to pass on the way down? Because a few months before her murder, Jodie's curfew was 10 o'clock, and come 2 o'clock in the morning, no Jodie. Now, there was no police, there was no search party, there was no panic. Judy waited till Janine came in, said, get along to your cousins and see if Jodie's there. If she is, tell her she's grounded for life. So Janine went along to the cousins and sure enough, Jodie was there with friends having a wee smoke. And on the night Jodie was murdered, they had to pass the cousins' house to go to the path. Why didn't they check? She was there a couple of months ago. She could have been there again, but they didn't check. Why did they insist on going back down a path that looks just come up and there's been nothing there? She insisted they went back down that path. Why didn't they go along Lady Path and go to the cousin's house, which she used to go to? Why didn't they search it? They were virtually passing it. They didn't search anywhere. Judy knew that Jodie and Luke used to go to my workplace some nights because they used to obviously go for a smoke and talk to my night watchman. They had to pass, see where you parked the car. Mm -hmm. They, there's, if you walk, keep walking where you pass the car, pass the car wash, there's a path and that gets you down towards that path. Now, that's the way they came. Why didn't Stephen, he was a, quite a tall chap, why didn't he just cross the gate, cross the fence? Have a wee, Jodie, are you here? Are you here? Why didn't they check my place? They didn't. They didn't check anywhere. They insisted they went back down the path. Why though? They didn't, I don't did, know. Did they know more information and what they're letting we on don't know. to? Or we was don't. it just maybe gut feeling if something bad's happened? Sometimes you feel no. that feeling that something's not right. No, we think they weren't actually initially looking for Jodie. They were initially looking for another family member who had gone missing that day. So was... And that's how they got there so damn early. And what time was the body found? Uh, Jodie's? Quite late on. Was it? Some 11 or something like that, something like that. And how many bits of DNA again? Different bits of DNA, oh, the look, crime we've got, scene? We've got blood, semen, sperm, saliva, hair, fibre, six. And were they ever identified with anybody? Well, we some of the semen, that was found in a condom, and that guy's been named... His excuse for that is a wee bit weird, but hey-ho, each right, to his own. The, the condom that was used, mm -hmm. the guy was masturbating. He's, yes. He's, he's, Why he's would you do that? He's finished off down... Was it done beforehand or was it done after? I don't do know. He's know. maybe been the kind of person who's got off and seen a dead body because he must have seen her where he was. He must have. It's weird. That, that is so weird. But again, why use a condom for masturbating? So 
could that potentially be that somebody's seen a bo- seen a dead body and basically played with herself to? That's the only thing we can think of. Was there any DNA, other DNA on the condom? No. Just his, Just and his. he was identified. Yes. A few years later, not at the time, because the police got all excited because they thought it was Luke's. And of course, once it was tested, they're like, oh, damn, it's not. It's not Luke's. So going forward then for try to fight for a retrial, so what's the process now? Are you looking for people to try and help you? Are you looking for people to try and get more involved in the case? Because we're basically shedding light on it anyway. And, and more people well, are... Well, basically, we've got to get together all the new evidence we've got and get a new lawyer and somebody who's got the guts to do it, to go through with it. I think and people are scared to take this case on. Yeah, he's had umpteen lawyers. Have they been sacked or have they left? No, we, we've sacked them because they've been useless. Um, the last one I tried to get, I was somebody came into my work and I went, oh, God, brilliant lawyer for you, top-notch, young guy, wants to make a name for himself, here's his number. Great. Phoned him. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Gave him all the information. Oh, it's um, Luke Mitchell. Right, yeah. Ooh, huge case, huge. Um, I'm not that big yet. I went, well, you never will be if you sit back and not do anything. So he just he just basically ran a mile. So obviously we'll go back to touch on the press as well, a lot of the newspapers, because I know you've got trust issues with speaking to people. Mm. Um, because you have been everything that the papers have said with some crazy shit, like, we go back to the Marlon Manson stuff, a weird relationship with yourself, you and your son. Um, oh, there's weirder than that. Just stuff that they've really, they've made you look bad. They put in, this is priceless, they put in that Mia was our second German Shepherd. Our first one, Luke practised on, slit its throat and hung it at our front door, as you would. Like, none of the neighbours would see or I wouldn't be done by the SSPCA. So that's when the Marlon Manson stuff comes in, the drinking mm-hmm. blood, the torturing animals, the He loved animals. The crazy stuff. I was a hedgehog carer, right? Now, I got a, hedge, a baby hedgehog in. Now, we knew it was going to die that night. We knew it was going to die because the person who found it was feeding it cow's milk. We can't give a baby hedgehog cow's milk. It'll die. You've got to give it goat's milk. An adult hedgehog will get serious, serious sickness and diarrhoea, but a baby hedgehog will die. Now, this was only the size of a hamster, so it was a very, very, very young baby. Now, that boy, we had to feed it every two hours. Now, he knew it was going to die, and I told him, because I wasn't going to sugarcoat it, you know, there wasn't going to be a happy ending with this. This was going to die. And I said, but I'll have to stay up all night because it's got to be fed every two hours. Because obviously, just because it was going to die, it didn't mean it would have a horrible, horrible end to its life, you know. So, and he stayed up all night with me. I did two hours, he did two hours, I did two hours, he did two hours. There's not many 14 year olds would do that. It's a hedgehog, poke it with a stick. You know yeah, I mean? so that's what the paper says again. <laughs> he was killing dogs and slitting his own dogs through it. If you're reading that, if I'm reading that, I'm going to automatically think he's a fucking psycho, if I'm mm. honest. And that's what I did think. I, I'm going you should to have seen them with Mia. They were, oh, it was, in fact, I used to get quite jealous because Mia was my dog. And sometimes, you know, their relationship was like, oh God, you know, whoa. You know, they were really, really close. Because you have another son. Was he ever a suspect? Was his name ever thrown into the mix? Only by the Joneses family. So both sons. Was there mm. any, any others? Major suspects that were... For a while, there was a Mark Kane. Now, Mark Kane was a student in New Battle Abbey College. When you see photos of Mark Kane and you see Luke, you're like, whoa, <laughs> identical twins. And you, they could be mistaken for each other. Now, Mark Kane has a magical parka. And on the, a few nights after the murder, he went to another guy's house and he had scratches all over his face and the guy went what happened to your face Mark he gave three different accounts of how he scratched his face now there's only one account and that's the truth was there any DNA on 
Jodie's nails or anything or no. nothing like that? No. It's such a savage, savage crime um, to somebody who's to went through that brutality. It's really sad. I mean, a lot of her injuries were done after death. So it's been somebody who really didn't give a shit about being caught. But it's obviously somebody who, if look as innocent like you say, then it's somebody who's, who's not as daft as people think either. Because if there was no potentially a major DNA to... He's had helpers. You think had... there's been more than one involved? Well, definitely after the... You, see, you think it's been a punishment killing? What's a punishment killing? Like he's found out something that she's done and he's punished her for it. It's savage. So for going forward for yourself and trying to shed more light on the case too, because since the Sandra Lean one's been released, a lot of people have kind of changed their mind yeah. because they believe in what they see, including myself, and I've, I've said it to you before, when Luke Mitchell's name came up to me, I thought guilty. I thought the things that the paper says. I didn't know fuck all about it, I'm going to be yeah. honest. But when you start questioning things and start looking into it, no DNA. Um, you, the, the thing that got it for me is he's both passed a lie detector. Now for six questions to get passed, and who is the man again, sorry? Terry Mullins. Would Terry Mullins be willing to give an interview as well to speak about it? He might well do. I mean, he told us that he would be willing to testify. You can't use a lie detector. Of course. In court. Yeah. But the tester can give evidence, and mm -hmm. he said he'd be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you don't just go in and get wired up and, you know, mm -hmm. fire. You're, you're asked about the Dean question. He studies you as a person because he was getting a wee bit worried about me because apparently I was fidgeting. Nerves. So I didn't realise I was fidgeting, but I was fidgeting. And he thought, oh, God, I've got a fidget on my hands here. But How was the reaction when you got your results back from the test? Have you got the the, the questions there? I have for the in test? my bag, guys. Can you use the bag over, Stephen? Um, and we can read them out. The big bag. That's it. <laughs> Working hard today, Stephen. I tried to find your man bag, but that's the manest bag I had. <laughs> mm, got to go upside down. You've got a lot of reading to do here, then. That's fine. Here we go. So this is the uh, questions and results to your polygraph yes. test. This is done with um, private confidential. So. How many questions did you get read, Corinne? Well, you're asked quite a few, but then that's just to test your reaction. Yeah. You know, because I thought, what on earth is he asking me that for? You know, are you sitting on a chair? And you're like, you can see I'm sitting on a chair, but it's just to see how your body reacts when you're telling yeah. the truth. So these are the questions that you got read to you um, during the lie detector test. Yes. So question one, did you lie in your court testimony during Luke's trial? Your answer was no, which was correct. Yes. Question two, did you falsify Luke's alibi regarding his whereabouts on the day of Jodie's death? Your answer was no, which again was correct. Mm -hmm. Question three, did you burn any clothing or evidence that would incriminate Luke of Jodie's death? Your answer was no, again correct. Mm -hmm. So three questions that... You've been asked and three questions you've answered correctly. Yes. And you were charged as well for incriminating... For perverting the course of perverting justice. the course of justice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this man, how accurate is, accurate is his polygraphs? Well, apparently he's the highest in the field. And you'll see by... I think it's there... He, he writes a letter to me, or at the end, it's his same um, qualifications and where he was trained and whatnot. I mean, he's the highest in the UK. Is there footage of this as well? 
Yes. Was that ever put out? Because we know looks. Uh, lie yes. detector was put yeah, out. Yes, it was put out. Mm-hmm. Did the, the press, when you got your results, what did they do with the results? Was that in the papers or did they? Oh, it was a big double page thing. Mm. And I thought, oh my God, you've been calling me a lying bitch for years and now I'm God's gift. How was your emotional reaction to when you actually got your results that you passed? I just like told you. Was that a bit of, no, it's not closure because you've not even kind of... It wasn't closure, but at least it was like, see? Yeah. Told that, you I was telling the truth. Yeah, because mud sticks. It does. Mud sticks. And it you does. could take another 10 lie detectors, Luke could take them, but again, until you, he's walked at that court, an innocent man, then people are always going to be judging just now. But even if he did get out innocent, people would still judge. Oh, God, I... His life will never, ever be the same. Ever. Has anybody ever tried to come forward to write a book or anything or talk about your experience? Well, Sandra's written our first book, No Smoke. Mm -hmm. But so much has happened since then. And so much. And now she's written a second book. Um, There's... I think in, in the future, a lot more will happen. I mean, it's basically, this could happen to you. Anybody? This could happen to anybody. Yeah. We were a normal, law-abiding... I mean, my parents were quite... I had a brilliant upbringing, but they were strict, and I was taught to respect the police. Um, and in those days, when I was young, you were taught manners, you were taught politeness, you were taught this, you were taught that. If it's not yours, don't touch it. You know, and nowadays... Kids aren't taught anything like that. I mean, I'm surrounded by feral little bleeps and they've got no respect for anything. Nothing. So for trying to get a retrial put in place, it it could potentially take another few years? Could, because courts (laughs) are very slow. Everything to do with law is very slow. See, I'm 60 now. Um, Getting old. Well, I'm old. I'm officially old. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so I'd like it to happen quite soon. I mean, bless her, my mum. She never managed to make it. She was, she was hanging on to see Luke out, but, um, and that was total shock. Um, her and Mia did the nasty on me. Basically, they were both sudden deaths completely out of the blue. Um, my mum was at work. My mum, though, the registrar, when I went to register her death, he was like, no, 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 no. I've just asked you how old your mum was. I said, well, she would have been 92 two days after her death. Yeah, but you said she was working. I went, yes, she ran the family business. She, I mean, my mum worked full time at 92. Um, she a wiry be soul, strong, strong woman. Drove a lot of people nuts. Irish, very Irish, <laughs> very Irish with it. Um, but and she wouldn't take shit from anybody. I mean, she, I mean, she was registered blind, but she had some vision out the bottom. But she would get on a bus by herself, and I'm like, Mum, you can't, don't, don't. No one will touch me. That's my grandson. My grandson's innocent. And she actually knocked somebody off their motorbike. Because I'd picked her up because she'd had a heart attack. And I'm like, you know, you're not getting the bus. You're not getting the bus. I will pick you up and take you to work. Then I will take you home. It's not a problem. So we're just coming up, you know, to the roundabout at Shell there. And there was three guys on motorbikes. Woof. And they surrounded me. And they were kicking the car and, and all the rest. Of it and top, being just total arseholes. My mum, bless her. <laughs> She'd never oper- operated an electric window in a car in her life. You know, she was used to the windy windows. She thought she was opening a window to, to shout at them. But she opened the door and knocked him clean off his bike. And so the other two were like, oh, shit, there's a mad woman in that car. Let's go. So they left us alone. So she, she knocked him clean off his bike. She didn't give a shit. And bizarrely... Luke was the first person, no, she was the first person to talk to Luke when he came out of school because when he phoned to work, she answered. She was never, ever questioned by the police. 
ever. And yet she spoke to him when he first came out of uh, out of school. Was there anything you'd like to touch on, Corin, before we finish up? Was there like anything you'd like to say? It's just from day dot, for some reason, all the rules, all the regulations, everything goes right out the window when it comes to Luke. For some reason, if you watch the news or read the paper or <laughs> paper, um, and you hear a dog walker found the body. You're like, oh, God, another one. But for some reason, the judge didn't believe that a dog could find a body. He didn't believe me, a founder. Why? Just why? Why are these dog walkers not arrested? They're all believed, but we weren't believed. And Mia reacted very, very strongly. And it was, although she was a trained tracker and she was good because she... the. Luke's lawyers actually got a top dog trainer up from London to test Mia. Now, he was actually hiding things in trees. And I thought, she's not a bleeding monkey. She's a dog. And she can't climb trees. But she passed every single test. Though she did eat the hairy microphone. She thought it was a squirrel. <laughs> um, but she passed all the tests. And the lawyers didn't use it. Now, they had a tracker at the scene, because they had Mia, they virtually arrested Mia, they put her in a pound, which was disgusting. They told me they'd given her to my mum, which was a lie. They had a tracker present, they never used her, they locked her up. A wee while after the murder, well, they asked Luke's lawyers to get hold of a pig carcass, because that's the nearest thing to a human, apparently, right? So the lawyers were supposed to get a hold of a pig carcass and bring it to the scene and the dog handlers would bring up dogs and they'd see how the dogs would react, see if they, if they act, reacted the same way as Mia because the pig carcass was going to get put where Jodie was found and their dogs where Mia was reacting because she was reacting very, very strongly. I mean, she was, Mia was big. I mean, she was big. And she stood up on her hind legs at the wall and started air sniffing, because obviously she could smell the blood. And she was scrambling at the wall, and Luke was calling her, going, Mia, come on, come on. Nah, she wouldn't move, she would not move, and that's when Luke remembered he'd seen the V, where the stones had fallen away, because it's, it's, the wall was over six foot. He was a wee smite, he couldn't get over it. And he thought, oh, well, I'll go back to the V, climb through the V, and go to where... Mia is to see what's there and of course what's there was Jodie. And that's where they say that it was Luke who found the body? Yes. Was the dog mentioned at court or anything? Was it mentioned to the press or was it just Luke found the just body? Just Luke found the body. And it doesn't the, look good but when it, no, people say that. No it doesn't and of course the judge didn't help because he told the jury members and everybody in court that he turned left because he knew where the body was. He turned left because that's where his dog was reacting. He would have been qualified for a village idiot if he turned right. And the witnesses and the people who are with Luke while searching for the body, they agreed with that in the they statement? They agreed. That it was a dog that they found agreed. the body? They agreed. Even, they even described how the dog reacted, how she was up on her hind legs and air sniffing and wouldn't come away. They agreed with everything Luke said, but then by the time they got to trial, no, the dog didn't do that. No, no, no. Luke went straight to the V. He obviously knew the V was there. Yeah, it's, um, there is a lot of unanswered things, I think. And I think then Janine, she said she saw Luke when he was over the wall, which was physically impossible. Janine was like five feet nothing, the wall six feet, you can't see over it. Mm -hmm. I think if it deserves at least a retrial for everything, everybody's saying that's true, then there's definitely something suspect about everything that deserves to be looked in it again, to look at again and um, to put everything out on the table and say, look, this is what we've got. Mm -hmm. This is the evidence we've got. This is what we've not got. This is the suspects that we've got. But I've still got to take into consideration, I'm taking it from what you're saying and Sandra, which is one side the Luke's family. Yep. So, but if it, everything you're saying is correct, then there is a lot of unanswered questions. There is, there's a lot. There's a um, lot. Especially with a lie detector, that's um, proof here that that you you passed, you no. passed, and people will be saying she's full of shit, looks full of shit, but 
Um, I'm quite flattered to think that I'm good enough to actually fool a lie detector. <laughs> That's what you people say, I mean? oh, they've been lying that much that they believe it, but it doesn't just go with that, it goes with it sweat. It goes it's with your body, yeah. there's three different places you're wired up. And apparently when you lie, you, you sweat, but you can't tell that yeah. with a human eye. Mm-hmm. You sweat in, the, in, in your hands. Obviously your heart changes and you're wired somewhere else. I can't remember where. And and say he does these daft questions prior so he can tell how you react. Asking your name. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or are you sitting on a chair? And you're like, you're looking at me. Of course I'm yeah. sitting on a chair. But it's just to see how your body reacts when mm-hmm. you're telling the truth. Because you don't just ask the same question once, do you not? No, you get that. I think it's three times, but in different order. Yeah, three times yes. each question, but in different orders. In different so order. It's not just three times you pass, it's nine times, because they were all correct. Yes. And then um, yes. For coming on the day, Corinne, because I know you struggle speaking with people, I know you struggle giving interviews. I, know I struggle it. with human beings <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah. I can understand. I can't understand, actually what you've went through and the way you've been treated even if it was Luke who did it the way you've been treated with getting your caravans burned down and your life left in turmoil it's it's sad to think that if Luke does get a retrial and he gets a not guilty then you're owed a lot of apologies from a lot of fucking people oh because my. the way you've suffered also but again you've still got to look at the way Jodie's family suffered also but you're fighting Obviously, for Obviously I mean freedom. my god no one no one can imagine what it's like to lose a child. No, I mean, that just, I mean, I'm a mother and I can't get my head around that at all. It's bad enough losing them in the circumstances I've lost them in. Mm-hmm. Um, because you still get to see Luke. I still get to see him when she doesn't have that with Jodie. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. But then when you know what we know, it's hard. Yeah, it must be. And we're not doing anything to upset anybody. We're doing this to fight for Luke's innocence. Mm-hmm. We're not doing it to upset the Joneses. We've got no interest in upsetting the Joneses. They've been upset enough to be fair. Of course fair. they have. It's, um, anything they see that mentions a daughter's name, they're gonna, it's going to trigger off points where... But then they've also... We show them understanding, but they've got to show us some understanding yeah. as well. It's got to work both ways. Yeah, which is a fair point, so... For going forward for the future, Corinne, I hope you get a retrial. Because I think if the evidence that we're getting told, which is basically none, I think it deserves a retrial. <laughs> just a tad. But the, the justice system, it can it can take a, a while. Again, with guys speaking on my show who's been through that turmoil, who's been through that pain and misery, to be serving 20 years for a crime that didn't commit, shows that it happens. Mm-hmm. It happens. And when people who are mentioning... I'm just thanking God or whoever's up there that they, they abolished hanging <laughs> because Luke would be dead by now yeah. and there's no coming back from that there's, there's no, no there's coming no, back from that there's no fighting no that's, that sticks with no. you I mean you think you know years and years after the hanging you know the family get an apology <laughs> big deal yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and even with Joe Steele and T.C. Campbell who they get compensation but the most valuable currency in this world is your life, your time. No and your mo- freedom. Yeah, no money can... can. You're fr- you do not realise how much your freedom means to you until this happens. Yeah. Um, and you don't realise how shitty human beings... Can- I mean, I've virtually cut myself off from virtually every human being there is. I only see them when I absolutely have to because I don't like them anymore. I do not like human beings is anymore. Is that the trauma you've been through? Mm. The pain, the misery, yep. from the press to people trying to run you over to basically try to kill you as well. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's sad, but I just hope that he's do get a retrial and a fair trial at that, that it puts it to bed where everything's put on the table and then you can decide from there because looking at it from the outside, it doesn't look fair. And that's me being mm-hmm. honest. That's only if everything that you're saying and Sandra's saying is true, but the polygraph even... Kinda just made up my mind that the, he's both passed a lie detector to say, to cover, to say that he's went lying on yep. s- the questions because I believe one of Luke's questions as well is, "Did you murder Jodie Jones?" Mm. Which he says no, and which he passed. So. Well, you had to be asked that, didn't you? I mean, that's why he's in prison. Of course, that's prison, the main question. Yeah. Mean, yeah. So. so it's um, it's such a touchy subject, but it's a subject that I'm not going to shy away from. If I personally think that somebody's got a story to tell that 
there could be a miscarriage of justice and I'm going to let them speak mm -hmm. because I'll, I'll always get backlash no matter what guest I got on but I'm man enough to let people tell their story which I've let you come on and tell your story and for coming on today I know you can be nerve wracking but you're just trying to shed some light on your son's potential case mm -hmm. that he could be innocent so for coming on today Corinne I appreciate it and no problem. going forward for the future I no wish problem. you all the best Thank and you. you get the retrial you. that you deserve so do I and sometime soon <laughs> yes. thank you okay no problem so from your, your own point of view for Luke Parson do you think he killed Jodie Jones absolutely not and Corinne Mitchell do you feel as if she was involved in some way from this case to help her son? Absolutely not. <laughs>